Okay, so we've written down the, the classical or Galilean transformation from S to S prime right here. And it's this is the spatial transform. It tells you how to go between different coordinate values, X prime and X, Y prime and Y, principal Z prime and Z. And we've assumed that the time is the same as measured in, in both coordinate systems. Now to measure the velocity, the velocities is measured in each. So if to transform between velocities, then you basically just take the time derivative of the expressions for the coordinate values, okay? So, um, for example, the uh, velocity as measured in the prime coordinate system, we plug in is just the time derivative of the coordinate value measured in that system, and we just plug in the expression that we have right there for the spatial transformation, okay? And that, in the end, gives us um, a transformation between the velocity measured in the prime system to the velocity measured in the unprime system. And they're just related very simply and intuitively um, with the, uh, by the velocity of the relative velocity of the two coordinate systems. Now, the y um, velocities are the same because the relative motion is in the x direction as we set up the problem. Okay, so now this is the velocity transform. Okay, so there you have it. That's the Galilean transformation. Now, a couple notes. Um, one, Note that Newton's fundamental law of dynamics is invariant under Galilean transformation. So what does that mean? So if we if we look at um, the Newton's second law, f prime equals m a, f prime equals m a prime. I've included the primes here because let's imagine that we're measuring the force and the acceleration in the prime system. Okay, and then of course we know that. Uh, that the acceleration is just the time derivative of the velocity, but now again we're make sure to have the prime there to, to indicate that we're measuring this in the prime system. Now if we in, uh, insert the expression that we had from the velocity transformation on the previous slide, right there, okay, for v prime, then what you find is that uh, since we're assuming that the velocity, the relative velocity is always constant, uniform, the time derivative of the relative velocity between the two coordinate systems is zero. It drops out, and what you're left with is just the time derivative of the velocity of the object measured, of a, the velocity of an object measured in a, um, in a, in the unprimed coordinate system, okay? And so that's just the acceleration measured in that system, which is again just equal to the force. So what we find is that the forces measured in the two in the two um, coordinate systems, the primed and unprimed ones, two coordinate systems which are moving relative to each other with constant velocity, those forces are the same. In the, okay, and so that's um, that's why we say that it's uh, that Newton's laws are invariant under Galilean transformation. Now the bad news is that imagine if we have that's that's the good news. Um, the bad news is that imagine that if we if uh, the object that Anna released were a light beam. Okay, imagine. For example, that she sorry that she turned on a um, she turned on a flashlight. Okay, then in that case. Um, the she she would measure the speed of light. Um, the, she would measure the light coming out of that flashlight as what we call the speed of light. We designate that as c. And Bob would measure that plus the relative velocity of the two coordinate systems. Okay, and so Bob would observe. superluminal velocity is this possible and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next lecture